Hi, I'm David Johnson, pastor of New Tabor Brethren Church here in Caldwell, Texas, and I want to welcome you to New Tabor Brethren Church's Christmas Eve service. Merry Christmas to all of you. Now, we want to begin with a scripture reading this evening, and let's go to the Word of God in Luke chapter 2. We're going to read the entire chapter. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
I want to give an explanation this evening of the lights of Christmas and of Hanukkah. Now, to my right, we have the Advent candle. The Advent candle, the five candles represent hope, peace, and the pink one is joy, love, and the white one in the middle represents Jesus. They were lit on consecutive Sundays leading up to Christmas in many churches in the Western world. Now, in the Middle East, in Israel, they have what they call the, what, the, the Festival of, of, uh, of Dedication or the Festival of Lights, and they call it Hanukkah. And this is what Jewish families do. But here's the thing. As children of God, of those of us who have been engrafted into the vine through Jesus Christ, this is also part of our heritage. I'm a Western world Gentile, but I've been adopted into Christ's family, and his family is Jewish. So we need to understand what this means and what they're doing. A lot of us see the lights and we know that they're lit consecutively, but we don't know why. So very quickly, let me give you an explanation. So back in 168 BC, there was a group of people called the Maccabeans. They were uh, priests, but they were called warring priests. Now, these guys were, were under the occupation of the Greeks and the Syrians. And they had been captured. The, the, the nation of Israel had been captured. The temple had been occupied by these people. So they were trying to get the Israelis to desecrate their own temple. One story of a woman named Hannah and her seven sons. Not Samuel's mother, but another Hannah and her seven sons. They were brought to the temple and told to uh, sacrifice a swine. And that was unlawful, and they refused to do it. So the Greeks and the uh, Syrians killed Hannah and her sons in the temple. They tortured them and killed them. And they brought some other folks in there, a fellow named Eleazar and his sons, and they told him to do the same thing. Now, instead of them being tortured and killed, of course, they refused. Eleazar and his sons turned on, on the soldiers and killed them. And then they uh, rose up, the Maccabeans, which were the, the uh, Jewish priests. They rose up and they took back the temple of God and drove the Syrians and the Greeks out. Now, to celebrate this miraculous thing that they had done over world power, they lit the menorah. But they only had enough oil for one night because they could, didn't have time to go get more oil. And the, the menorah was supposed to be burning constantly in the temple. So what happened, here's the miracle, is this menorah, the oil that was meant for one day, burned for eight days, every single one. So now the Jews, in the time of Hanukkah, it's an eight-day period before Christmas, they light each one of these on consecutive nights. They give gifts, they have a dinner, and they speak a blessing and a prayer as they're lighting their candles. And many Christian families are beginning to do this because this is part of our heritage. This isn't something strange. This is our family. So we have been adopted into the Jewish family. So we celebrate both. So this is what this means, the miracle, the the. the the festival of dedication and the festival of lights. This is the beauty and this is the miracle of Hanukkah. And one more thing, Jesus celebrated this festival. Of course, he didn't celebrate Christmas because he is Christmas. But this we know through scriptures that Jesus's family would have been part of the lighting of the menorah in celebration of Hanukkah. So Johnson family, we're going to join in that tradition also.
Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, God bless you, and good night.